Thank you so much, Danny. Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to this uh, new student orientation information session uh, titled Returning or Mature and Returning Students. Uh, I'm Justine Dogbe, a coordinator in the Leadership and Engagement Office. I will be presenting with Heather Hutchinson, who's a mature student and a student ambassador. And we had um, a colleague of ours, Lori Melnichuk, who's an academic advisor, also working with us to create this content. Hello. So uh, in beginning, we would like to do a Treaty 6 territory land acknowledgement. We acknowledge that the land on which we gather in Treaty 6 territory is the traditional gathering place for many indigenous people. We honor and respect the history, languages, ceremonies, and culture of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit who call this territory home. The First People's connection to the land teaches us about our inherent responsibility to protect and respect Mother Earth. So with this acknowledgement, we honor the ancestors and children who have been buried here, missing and murdered Indigenous women and men, and the process of ongoing collective healing for all human beings. We are reminded that we are all treaty people and of the responsibility we have to one another. So just the brief agenda of what we wanted to discuss uh, this evening with you, we're really hoping for more of an organic conversation. Um, but as we started with our welcome and introductions, of course, uh, we'll share a brief video um, which features Lori, who's the academic advisor that I mentioned is unable to attend today, but uh, has some really great advice as she's a McEwen staff person and a mature student currently. So I know a lot of um, her experiences might mirror some of what you are experiencing. We also will just do a brief true or false, and then um, Heather will speak to some of her experiences as a current mature student and give you the chance to also respond and ask us some questions uh, as we go along, okay? So I'm just gonna do that awkward thing where I switch to another video. Bear with me a few seconds here. It can be a scary yet an exciting time, and I thought it would be nice to share some resources you have available to you. I always like to think of these as tools you can add to your tool belt for success. Right. Advisors at McEwen can be a great resource tool. One second, sorry, you all are not seeing that content anymore, right? No. Okay. One second here. Our goal is to provide clear information and direct you to additional resources on campus when you need them. Faculty and school academic advisors are able to guide students through the process of academic planning, such as course enrollment, obtaining special permissions, such as visiting student requests and credit overloads, placement of assessed transfer credit taken outside of McEwen that have previously been assessed and posted to your course history, and any other program-specific inquiries. Life, school, and work can be overwhelming, so finding that right balance for you is important for both your mental health and your physical health. As a McEwen University student, you have access to an excellent support network created to help you succeed. If you don't know where to turn, you can always talk to an advisor in your program or in the Academic Advising Center, and we'll make sure to connect you. You can visit mcewen.ca advising for links and ways to connect. 
I know one of the first resources I accessed after advising were the areas I knew would help support my learning. Areas like the Writing Center can be invaluable, especially with all the papers you have to write and the citing you need to do when referencing other people's ideas. I know it was one of the best things I did as they had so many helpful tips and techniques. Access and Disability Resources, or ADR, can help students with long-term or temporary disabilities to coordinate accommodation. Exam services can help accommodations and other exam-related services, such as distance or deferred exams. Funding can also be a real concern when you're in school, and the Fees and Financial Aid Office can help with student loans, scholarships, awards, bursaries, and emergencies. With so many demands on our time, finding that balance between school, work, life, and family can be really hard. Remember, you are important too. If personal or educational counseling, you can visit Student Affairs for assistance. They offer anything from wellness and psychological services to diversity and inclusion. Weston is McEwen's Indigenous Centre and offers personal, academic, financial and cultural support. They also promote, facilitate Indigenous education and cultural activities and mentorship. Students Association offers peer support, student advocacy, emergency food bank and many interactive and networking opportunities and volunteer these through clubs and other functions. McEwen International is a great support for our international students, as well as a study abroad initiative that helps to know where a lot of the resources and opportunities are out there. We all want to succeed, but sometimes that odd course can really prove challenging or you need to find a better balance. Being aware of your academic schedule is really important as it identifies all of the dates and deadlines, such as and refund deadline dates, as well as the last day you can withdraw without any academic penalty. As the institution standing reports every year, you want to make sure you remain in good standing. And a final tip is to keep connected with your instructors and classmates. We all have things that come up like unexpected illnesses, family emergencies, and many other things. Your instructors care and are here to help you through your educational journey. Connecting with your instructors and peers, forming study groups, and even working with tutors can help. Networking with your peers can help in your studies and also in your career. Knowing someone can give you a potential edge once you start looking for work after school. Another instructor pointed out, networking and using your student status to engage in your field can be a golden ticket in finding employment. And the Careers and Experience Office can also help students and alumni navigate their career journey. At the end of the day, know you're not alone. All the juggling can be hard, but it will be worth it in the end when you celebrate your many milestones and your long-term educational goals. We're here to support you and help you, and we want to see you succeed in your dreams. Okay, um, so that was Lori, as I mentioned, uh, as an academic advisor and um, a mature student herself has a lot of experiences that are similar to those of you that are currently enrolled at McEwen and might be going through some of the same types of experiences. Um, Lori has provided her contact information at the end of our slides so we can absolutely Hi everyone. that with you. And um, if you have some questions that you wanted to connect with her specifically about, you can. That video actually is available um, online. So if there if you'd like to rewatch it or this recording of this session i know will be available um danny or denise can speak to when but you will have access to kind of review because i know she covered a lot of great McEwen service areas um very quickly and a lot of them offer significantly more than was mentioned just now so there'll be a chance for you to review all of that um but kind of back to our introduction. So um, again, my name is Justine Dope. My pronouns are she, her. I am in, I'm a coordinator in um, our careers and experience office. And what that office does is a lot of things, but uh, very briefly, it just helps McEwen students in navigating their career development journey, as well as supporting um, students who are participating in co-op and experiential learning opportunities. 
Uh, my portfolio specifically is the leadership and engagement portfolio. And we're a team um, of staff that provides McEwen students with co-curricular learning opportunities. So those are non-academic learning opportunities, um, includes but is not limited to campus and community volunteer experiences, as well as projects and activities that support students develop um, career ready leadership skills. So some of the initiatives and programs in my area are the Emerging Leaders Certificate Program, which is a virtual workshop series um, that covers personal group and community leadership themes and topics. Uh, it'll be starting September 16th and students can register on McEwen Life. So that's McEwenLife.McEwen.ca. Um, details will be I'm sure provided as well as we go along, but uh, that's a great new initiative that has been open to all students. So first year students and final year students have been participating and learning alongside one another and some great presenters as we really go deep into some topics around leadership skills. Um, the McEwen Ambassador Program, which Heather is a part of, is also in this area and that's one for students who are wanting to represent give back and sort of showcase uh, the positive image of the university from the student perspective. So um, McEwen students are, or sorry, McEwen ambassadors are students that have completed at least one year of post-secondary. So if you're in your first year right now, you wouldn't be able to be an ambassador, but think about it for next year. Um, applications open about March, um, of, so in the winter term, and will likely close in May. So as an ambassador, you would be, you'd be required to contribute a minimum of 40 to 50 volunteer hours. Um, and that would be a mixture of on-campus or community opportunities. You're gonna go out, you're gonna connect, you're gonna, again, as I said, showcase the great things about McEwen and indicate to the community that we are wanting to give back and support those around us. Um, the Golden Key International Honor Society is one for students who are in the top 15% of their academic programs. So again, that's for students who've completed at least one year of study because your GPA would be calculated based on that for this um, membership. And Golden Key, as I said, an international honor society. At McEwen, we have a chapter, the U of A has a chapter. I think there are about 60 chapters um, in Canada and then beyond that, uh, there are a couple hundred across the world. So it's a really large network of students, graduate students, professionals, um, scholars, a variety of folks that you would have access to if you're invited to join. And all of their activities and programs uh, center around the pillars of leadership, service, and academics. The co-curricular record is also an initiative in my area, um, which pretty much captures all of the non-academic experiences that students are doing. And it's a great addition to a resume, um, a portfolio, your graduate school application, anything that would showcase what you've been doing outside of the classroom and highlight the great learning outcomes and skills you've developed. And then lastly, one that I am hoping a lot of uh, the first year students in this session have now heard about is the first year experience mentorship program. So it's a brand new initiative that we started this year with the intention of connecting incoming first year students to their peers, um, specifically to upper year students that are serving as mentors and helping you get connected, become familiar with the university um, and just support, supporting your overall co-curricular experience. So this is a non-academic mentorship program. Um, while you will be put into mentorship communities on Discord, with students that are in your class. The intention is for your mentor to support you in finding your way around campus and helping you understand and remember some of the important dates that you need to know, understand that there are great resources that are available to you, just like we're all doing through NSO as well. Um, so most first year students should have received an invitation from their mentor today actually to join the Discord server. So if you did get that email, don't think it's something not important. It is important, so check it out. Um, I'm gonna let Heather do a brief introduction and then we'll go into our tour of home. Hello everyone, my name is Heather Hutchinson. I am a second year student going into the, or continuing in the Bachelor of Communications program. 
I returned to university after about 20 years in the workforce. So I'm very familiar with the anxiety and second guessing yourself that you may or may not be going through uh, after applying and getting into school. Uh, it has been completely the right decision, very rewarding, very great for me and my future and my present. It's the journey is lovely as well as the destination. And uh, I'm brand new to the ambassador program and I'm finding that rewarding already. It's been about a week or so of doing things like this and it's already enriched my scholastic experience. Thank you, Heather. All right, um, I did see a question in the chat about the mentorship program. So um, as a first year student, the way that we've actually structured it is that all first year students will be assigned to a mentor mentorship community is what we're calling it. So um, I think that student's name was John. John, you should be receiving an invitation from your mentor by the end of the day today. Um, if you have not, then please follow up with me uh, through email and I will find out exactly which mentorship community you're from and make sure that you are paired with a, a mentor that's gonna reach out, okay? Um, my contact information will be available at the end of the slide. Um, there are a number of McEwen Discord servers that are happening right now. So I saw another comment about that. Um, I know the first year experience team. So uh, Denise King, who's also in the session in the background, um, is running a Discord server. And the ones that we are a part of as well, um, are different, but there is benefit in all of them. So it is up to you to choose which ones you engage with. Um, I can't speak exactly to the one that Denise is facilitating, but the one that our first year mentorship program is offering is a lot, like it's structured in that students who share a common class or program will be in the same community. So it's intended to help you meet people that you actually have, you know, something in common, like a class or an academic program with. Um, and then again, a mentor who's had some experience. The mentor may not be a student that is in the same program as you, but we've gone through a significant amount of training to ensure that they're gonna be ready to answer your questions. So you will be supported by someone who can do that very well. Okay. Um, I just wanna go on a little bit further. I saw Shauna's question as well. If you can hang on, I will get back to that afterwards. Thank you. All right, so our true or false um, folks can respond in the chat. Uh, we just got all the questions on the slide here. So the first one, mature and, mature and returning students have access to different services than other students. Is that true or false? Okay, see some responses, any others? Yeah, it's actually false um, in that mature students are McEwen students, just like all students, and they're the same services. Um, I guess that one was kind of intended to trick you. It doesn't mean that mature and returning students are not unique and special their own, um, you know, needs that will be supported. What we intend to share through that question is, all McEwen service areas are prepared to support you regardless of whether you are a mature and returning student or not. Um, so even though all services are the same and open to all students, we, uh, I guess, expect that you will receive great support um, regardless of which category you fall into, okay? So the second question, McEwen's Careers and Experience Office offers resume and cover letter and LinkedIn profile review, interview practice, and graduate school application support to students and alumni. True or false? Yeah, that one was kind of an easy one, I guess. So true. Um, I, I think we were intending to try and trick you with the alumni piece, but that is something to be aware of. So even though you're here in your first year, um, even when you graduate, you have access to, I believe the limit is five appointments. So there isn't a time span on how 
or when you need to use those five appointments. But after you graduate, you have access to five different appointments with the careers and experience team. Okay. Number three, you can only enroll in fall term courses. Now, I believe is what it should say. <laughs> Yeah, you guys got it. So um, that is false. Of course, you can register for your winter 2022 courses right now, and it's strongly encouraged that you do. Uh, so it can help you get the courses that you want. Um, instructors are approachable if you ex experience problems. True or false? I saw some false there, but I'm hoping it was to the, to the previous question. Um, like Lori said in her video, Instructors are caring and want to see you succeed. So yes, it is true. They are supportive. They will uh, accommodate you as best they can. Uh, it's up to you though to reach out to them and connect and inquire about how to continue to make the most of your learning. Um, and then number five, there are only accommodations if you have a permanent disability. Is that true or false? For sure. So false. Again, Lori kind of gave away the answer there, but um, that is false. So accommodations are available if you have a permanent or a temporary disability. Um, an example of a temporary would be maybe uh, a broken arm and something that's impacting your um, study. So that is uh, our little activity. Thanks for participating. So um, we did have a few you know, resources that we wanted to provide, and we will share these again after um, the presentation with you, maybe just into the link, into the chat. Um, there was a video here that I'm going to share again, so bear with me on my little switch. Welcome to McEwen Life. The perfect tool for finding the jobs you want. Search and get email updates on new posts matching your specific criteria. Career and placement resources are available 24 seven. Book appointments with career and experience advisors. Whether it's defining your career goals or interviewing for your dream job, we can help you. And don't forget that you can still access McEwen Life at all of our services for two years after graduation. Find your next adventure with McEwen Life. Visit McEwenLife.McEwen.ca. Okay, so of course that last little bit was the only piece that was inaccurate. Um, you can access five appointments after you graduate. So even if you graduate for, I don't know, it's 10 years since you've graduated, you are still eligible to access up to five appointments. That two year limit no longer is there. Um, I'm seeing a few questions in the chat uh, after our true or false. So have any other students? mature students had success. Okay, um, that might not be one for me to answer. And are mentors available for mature students too? Yes, mentors are available for mature students. We have put all first year students. Um, there's been an exception of a few programs that just based on the structure there have not been included in our mentorship groups, but uh, the best way for folks to confirm if they have, um, if they are a part of a mentorship group is just to send an email. So you can just send an email to me at that I volunteer at McEwen.ca account. And um, that way I can verify on our list. So I don't kind of end up going way off track with our presentation here. Um, May I quickly yeah. speak to this question? Please. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by work experience, but I have a, an extensive university career, um, un, uncomplete, incomplete prior to this. And on occasion, they will let something squeak by 
I, I had a couple classes that are older than 10 years that I got credit for. So if you have a concern, I would encourage you to contact the university and maybe press the issue a little bit and, and just to at least put your own mind at ease. If that makes sense. Thanks, Heather. Um, well, we're going right into the section where we ask you some questions. So first one we've got for you is how do you manage your time as a mature student who I'm sure has a very full life with other commitments and now uh, your academics? Um, I manage my time in a few different ways. I'm lucky compared to some people. Um, I don't have a family to navigate and I'm not currently working. I'm just studying. So that's something to take into consideration. I'm pretty lucky in that regard. Um, I find little hacks very, very helpful. Um, I, I utilize written paper calendars, electronic calendars. I print things out and put them on the wall. Um, you have to try, you don't have to. It's advisable to try a few different methods and see what works for you. Something that may not have worked for you in the past in regards to school or, or work may ring a bell with you now. And the reason I do paper and electronic is to be a catch all. So if I have something that I can look at with my eyeballs at a quick glance, I find that very helpful full to keep me on on track. But I also like to know that I'll get a little. Ding on my phone, just anything I can use is very helpful. Um, I find things like the Pomodoro technique very helpful and I, I tie that in with block scheduling. So I personally on occasion can get mentally overwhelmed with what's ahead of me. So with block scheduling and the Pomodoro, they, they force, they don't force you, but you can give yourself permission to focus on a particular thing for an hour or two hours and then move on to something else. So you can let go of all your worries. You can let go of the housework, you know, talking to your parents, whatever you need to do for that two hour block, it's accounted for. So I, I find that very helpful. And um, also just the importance of balance. I wanted to say you can feel like if you don't get an A in this class, what are you even doing? Why are you even here? You're a failure. That is absolutely not the case. One of my professors last year uh, said that it's very good to have the courage to fail. And he didn't necessarily mean fail out of a whole class, but like if you take some courage and you take a chance on a project that's really out of your comfort zone, but you learn something, that's more valuable than just getting straight A's because you've memorized a bunch of rote information. So try it, try to look at this journey as as valuable as the degree you're going to get at the end of it, because this is anywhere from 2 to 3 to 4 years of your life. So try to, as much as you're able, make it an enriching experience day to day. You know, it doesn't have to be a complete slog and a tear filled journey. There is time for that block it in your, your, your block scheduling. Oh, goodness. Well, that's that's a really great response, Heather. Uh, thanks for sharing. Um, another one I'll speak to you or I'll ask you about. So how do you feel your experience as a mature student differs from your classmates that are not? I've actually made quite a few friends of all ages in my year and a quarter that I've been at McEwen. So first, I want to encourage you that while it can seem like age might be a barrier to building relationships, it certainly doesn't have to be. I have friends that are close to my age, <clears throat> which is old, and then I have friends that are 19 in their early 20s, up to 30s, yada, yada. It, it's more about what's in the person and how you have things in common, and even having the classes in common can be great. Um, there are, of course, unique challenges in that it's likely, though not a given, that a mature student will have more life responsibilities outside of school. That can be something you struggle with that others don't. But it's all manageable and it, it brings 
you bring to classes uh, a wisdom, or theoretically you can, that the youngins can appreciate, and that can kind of make you feel good sometimes. I would encourage, sorry, to, if your class has a Discord group, join it. That's how I made my friends. That's how I psychologically got through individual classes. I find them invaluable. Perfect, perfect. Uh, your answers are just like directing me to the next question to keep this flow going. So um, in terms of uh, building a support system, you know, how, how do you find that that's helped your experience as a mature student at McEwen? I probably would have gotten through without the friends I had made, but it's, it would have been more difficult, that's for sure. Like anything in life, if you're kind of in your own bubble, you can feel like you're freaking out and no one else is. Just the knowledge that someone else is upset can be helpful. I hope that doesn't sound terrible, but it makes you realize that this is a difficult thing you're doing and other people are also struggling. If you felt that everyone was just breezing through and you were the only one stumbling, it would just add an extra bit of burden to you, but everyone has their struggles and being able to commiserate is, is invaluable. In regards to Helen's question, um, I've only had this year and a quarter online, so it's very easy. I pretty much started a lot of the Discord groups once I learned what Discord was in the fall. So you just start up a channel and then you put it in the shitty chat for the class and you say, I made a Discord, here's the link and people join it or they don't. Some of them will be quite busy, some of them won't. All you can do is try. Someone may do it before you get the chance and then you can just join and you don't have to worry about moderating it. Um, so I, I don't know how that is going to go with, with in-person classes, so we'll have to see. Perfect, thanks. Um, what about uh, the co-curricular activities that you're a part of? So the ambassador program, a little plug there. Um, tell us about why you chose to join it and how you feel it. it's enhancing your experience, if it's enhancing your experience. It is, and I'm going to go in two directions. One is the altruistic peace and love path, which is I wanted to help others and uh, be able to give in for like things that I learned that maybe someone wouldn't hear from someone else. But there's also another path, which is also valid and fine. Um, if you do something like the ambassador program or something like that, that can increase your chances of getting a scholarship and it looks good on your CV. So it, it, it helps you grow as a person spiritually and in regards to skills. Perfect. I just saw a question that came up for, are there any particular activities, sports or clubs that cater more to 30 plus students? Um, I mean, I did speak to, and I have no problem saying again, uh, some of the different ways that McEwen is prepared to accommodate um, students that are mature and returning, sort of regardless of your age group. Um, but I understand that it is something that folks will be mindful of in joining maybe um, one of the student association clubs. Um, it's my opinion as a staff person is that you wouldn't know unless you try it out. Um, kind of as Heather mentioned as well, like, you know, she started up some of the Discord channels or servers that she wanted to see exist. And then people joined in on them. So with SAMU clubs, I'm aware that you can start your own as well. Um, so SAMU, the Students Association, you can uh, visit their website or check them out on Facebook. I'm sure they're on Discord as well uh, as a means to just explore what clubs exist because most SAMU clubs um, are based around various uh, like interests or topics or causes. So, um, I mean, you wouldn't know sort of what the age demographics are of folks that are a part of it unless you went out. Um, I've heard of intramurals as well. Uh, so on the sports side, um, as a means that you can get connected to people. And uh, with regards to my area and the leadership and engagement opportunities like volunteering, um, it's been great uh, to see that we've had representation 
from university students of all ages um, join as ambassadors, like as Heather is a mature student and she's an ambassador. I think that's really important to have that uh, diverse representation in our program anyway, because that is what makes up McEwen, right? We've got students of all experiences, walks of life, age demographics, and we want to show when we send our ambassadors out into the community, we want to show that variety and that diversity. So um, you would be absolutely welcome to join my initiatives if you chose to, but as well, I know um, across the campus, they would always welcome students that are mature as well. Um, I had a few other questions. Oh, well, this one, I will see how it goes, but do you have realistic expectations, Heather? I often did not, and it was really great to be humbled. It sucked, but it was also great to be humbled and to learn what your limits were. So, for instance, and this is a personal thing, it's going to vary from person to person. I started this, I started fall of last year taking 4 courses and then I got very hubristic and I was like, I can take 5, whatever. And it was very difficult. So, some things you're only going to learn through experience, whether or not it it's good for you or not. I'm still struggling with maybe taking 5. Sometimes it's hard to learn things. Fair enough. Um, Lori mentioned in the video about some of the service areas that she has used uh, throughout her time as a mature student. Can you tell us about some of the ones you've used? I haven't used a whole bunch yet because I've been online exclusively. So, unfortunately, I can't speak to that as much as I would like to. I have spoken to friends who've used the writing center, for instance, and that's been very helpful for them. Um, I personally, uh, I didn't struggle in the, in the execution of it, but when I first started, oh, just while I remember, um, the, the courses you need to take those wee little self-directed courses, like academic integrity, do those before your classes begin. They don't take all day, but it, you'll feel much better if you get those out of the way. So when I took my academic integrity course, it, it made you feel nervous. Like I'm for sure going to plagiarize my mistake. I have no thoughts of my own. That's why I'm here. Ah. But, you know, talking to your profs, talking to your um, classmates and, and the writing center can help you with that. It's, it's actually pretty clear and, and easy to not plagiarize. Perfect. Thanks. A question just came into the chat around, um, are you finding it harder to remember things as a mature student? Uh, the student says they can hardly remember their last, their full name or their name. Oh, anyhow, how do you deal with that? Um, again, mileage may vary based on various factors, but as a mature student, you're likely to be coming into your degree endeavor with more uh, sobriety, I don't mean literal sobriety, but like you, you're doing this, you're putting a lot on the line, potentially taking a career hiatus, maybe sacrificing a little time from family. So, you know, what's at stake. So that alone is going to motivate you and, and help you focus again, do things. I'll, I'll address the academic integrity thing too. That's coming up again. Um. Just remember why you're doing this. You're doing this for your future. You're doing it for your present self as well. You're meeting new people. You're pushing out of your comfort zone. You're learning new things. You're going to be richer. Not monetarily, but someday you're not. You're going to be richer having done this. No matter what happens, you're going to be better off at the end of it. So, um. And respect your own limits. Like, if you can only take three courses per term, there's nothing wrong with that. You don't need to take five or six to prove anything to anyone. It's better that you're as mentally well as you can be and, and that you do as well as you can. Um, sorry. And then the uh, blah, blah, blah. What was it? The academic integrity. I believe it's under Blackboard in self enrolled courses. So there's a library one and an academic integrity one that I believe are mandatory. And a lot of your intro classes, especially English, you need to show that you've completed those.
Sorry, okay. can I say one more quick thing? Yeah, go for someone, it. Someone, I said I could talk. I wasn't kidding. Um, <laughs> someone earlier had asked about mature students being able to get grants and bursaries and such. You absolutely can. Um, in uh, Once you're enrolled uh, on the website, uh, you go into the financial aid section, and once they're open, there's a, a great number of different things you can apply for, and the, and the requirements are in there. So some of them are for people just out of high school. I think there's at least one or two that are for mature students exclusively, and a great number of them have nothing to do with age at all. Okay, great. That was uh, one of my other questions, so. Someone has asked, when do scholarships open? They have been checking weekly. Any, any I don't remember that? exactly. I would encourage you to keep checking weekly. <laughs> it's, it's in September. It's not going to be right away, but it'll be soon. Perfect. Um, there was a question got a little buried in there. Any advice to help mature students finish their program on time, if not taking the full classes? Per semester as listed on the student plan. I presume that would be 3 per semester. I'm not sure what they suggest for you. I would go back to what I said before. If, if you're going to. Fill up your time with the recommended classes, but you're going to get grades that you are not pleased with. I would recommend that you take a little longer. I say that acknowledging that that could increase your student loan debt. So you have to balance all these things. So there are, I know people who are taking one or two classes per semester. This is something that you to an extent can self direct to meet your needs. Okay, thank you. Um. Another question around uh, do international students qualify for grants and scholarships? I don't know that any of us here could give an exact answer to that, um, but I would recommend connecting with uh, the McEwen International Office um, and then uh, as well potentially the Registrar's Office, um, depending on if those are McEwen specific grants and scholarships. Um, I'm aware of a few of the programs that I have been facilitating and not often um, do international students qualify, but it doesn't mean that there is no instance, right? So you just might have to do a little bit of research and connect with people, again, specifically the McEwen International Office. I think their email is just international at mcewen.ca, and uh, I'm sure that someone there would be able to help you. Um, so this last question that we have, I guess, already planted, but we're open to more if folks want to keep talking with Heather. Um, what is your sort of going back into the school year perspective? Like, what have you learned from, you know, online learning and this experience of COVID-19 with regards to your academics, Heather? Uh, what have I learned in the past year? Um, that I'm capable of more than I thought I was. I told myself for the past decade, like I was very unhappy in the career track I was in, which wasn't one at all. But I knew the only alternative to clawing my way out of that was returning to university. And I told myself, I don't want to. Ugh, young people, old people, I hate everybody. I'm lazy, blah, blah, blah. And then I ended up doing very well like emotionally scholastically and and it feels good to push yourself and do new things and you can do that at any point in your life so you know res having resigned myself to a life that i wasn't happy with was a mistake and luckily life pushed me in a different direction and i took a jump i i jumped and it was uh good very eloquent. You're welcome. Wow, I think that's that's really inspiring, Heather. Um, I feel like I'm learning so much more about you, and we've been in contact for a while. So I'm I'm excited to hear that you really are um, pushing yourself and challenging, you know, what you thought was the intended path that you were going to take, and exploring new ways of succeeding. So I'm glad to have you a uh, part of our ambassador program and chatting with you this evening. Um, 
for the students sort of in the room, the other students in the room, if you have any other questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat. We still have a bit of time here. Um, as I mentioned, uh, myself, Heather and Lori um, share our contact information. So if you know you want to ask us via email, you're welcome to do so as well. Um, the questions about the mentoring it would be best to send an email directly because I would have to look into our uh, list of, you know, a few thousand first year students to find out exactly which community you're part of, which mentor you've been assigned to, um, and get you connected the right way, which we really want to because the mentorship program is intended for you to connect for the first eight weeks of the term because that's where we've identified and, and a lot of uh, research has identified that first years benefit the most from support. So since we've just started um, this program, we will be connecting with you until about early November. So it would be great for you to um, join those Discord servers as soon as possible so you can get the most out of it. Um, 